What is up guys, my name is Mitchell Orditi and today we are going to be getting into a new player guide for Epic 7 for the year 2024. So I'm making it the end of 2023, but the guide series that I'm doing here should be good through all of 2024 if there are any changes I will let you know. So if you're getting into this game, um, I did make a guide series through 2023 and it did amazing. The amount of people that it helped was unbelievable. So I'm wanting to do it again so that anyone starting this game actually gets to experience this game for what it truly is. My goal with this guide is to get you into the game and make you want to stick with the game because you have a good account. This game uh, is a gear gotcha game more than the character gotcha game and we'll go over that later. Uh, but just keep that in mind the summoning of the characters you're going to end up getting all the characters So it's about using your resources efficiently early to make sure your account is stabilized to make you want to keep playing And that is what we will be doing So whenever you first start playing you can either do login or guest login and then you select your server I highly suggest going global server if you want another server It's fine, but global server is the most populated server It's easiest to find guilds and uh, Network and everything but PvP in this game There is real-time arena where you fight players in real time and you've clicked your turns and that is server wide you can doesn't matter what server on you're on you can play against the other people so it's not a huge deal you just cannot be in same guilds as people or see them naturally without being on the same server um so keep that in mind if your friends are on a certain server you want to go the same server as them so check with them so as you get into it we are just going to get straight through this and we're going to end up going to um the selective summon portion, that will be the first main point we cover within this guide, but let's just take some time real quick. I want to tell you about Epic 7. Epic 7's been around for about five years. It is a PvP-focused gacha game. In my opinion, the PvE is not worth playing this game for only. If you don't plan on playing PvP, uh, I do not suggest Epic 7 to you personally. Um, PvP gives you a reason to do all the PvE stuff, and the PvE is objectively just RNG-based once you get to the heavy hard pvp or pve portion of the game so that with that being said that this guide is going to be pvp focused our goal of this guide is going to be to get your teams set up for pve to clear the basic pve stuff that you need and then we're going to be getting our first rta roster set up and then after it'll take about a month of playing so this guide series you can watch it every day for a month the guide will be broken down into parts though not days this time so you can play at your own pace don't feel like you have to keep up with what i'm doing or you can go faster than what i'm doing last time people were i did look it by days and people were on day eight but they were on day 16 of the guide so play at your own pace there's some crazy animals like you guys out there that are going to play heavily but this is a very good game to get into that will you can play long term so it basically becomes a routine and the game gets updated every two weeks with new content new characters sometimes there's big content sometimes we have droughts for like a month but over the five years of playing the game always seemed to find a way to keep itself feeling fresh for the majority of the time but again there will be some dead points here and there so um in terms of focusing pvp a lot of people will tell you it's not possible to get to pvp fast but my last guide proved that it is very possible to do so i was able to achieve masters rta which is a rank that a lot of people play for years and cannot achieve because they do not know what they're doing and i was able to guide thousands of people to be able to reach masters rta within a 30 to 50 day period of playing their accounts and that is huge once you reach that point in uh the arena or uh, real-time arena it allows you to feel like you always have something to work on on your account it makes you get invested learn the characters so it is very very advised to do that so with starting the game everyone's going to be getting different things depending on when you start the game so as part of this guide i will not be claiming certain items so if you're starting the guide at a later portion uh, you will not be getting the returning player check-in rewards, and there will be different things in your mailbox that you get just from logging in. But as you see, I'll wait for this to go just so I can show that. So if you're getting into the game, the best time to start the game is always that day because every time they give rewards, they give to everybody. So if you wait to start for a time when they're giving free summons or free, as you see right here, that's a free five-star character. That's a free four-star or five-star artifact, um, which is the equipment for the character you are going to get this if you start now the next time they get this stuff away you'll get the stuff so don't wait don't think it now is a bad time to start right now is always the best time because you start making progression on your account and your account will overall be way stronger by starting it now also if you played epic 7 in the past many people tried the game out and then didn't know what they're doing came back and watched my guide and were able to actually enjoy the game the amount of positive comments have been amazing from that so if you have played the game in the past and are willing to take a gamble and try it again uh, I will do my best to get you to actually be able to enjoy the game for what it is. And um, 
with that, the community of this game is one of the best communities probably for any gotcha out there. Uh, it's They're all super, super wholesome. Uh, I've made so many friends over the past five years that have now become basically the people I talk to every day. So just know going in, this game will be what you make of it. If you decide to put the time in to learn it, become part of the community. I have a Discord server that I had a thousand people when I made the last guide four months ago. It now has nine over 9,000 people in a four month period. So gaining 2,000 people a month. And that place, if you want to join the Discord as you're playing through, you can ask questions, learn. It's very open to new players. And there's also the best guild system. I have the best guild system out of any content creator um, within my Discord. No other content creator is willing to put the time in that I am to try and help new players because I want this game to grow and I want this game, I want people to actually get to experience this game for what it is. So all of that being said, I will not be claiming all of this. I've said that like five times, sorry, but I will not be claiming any of the things that I do not think other people will be getting, but you guys should obviously claim this and hope for the best. If you are starting at a time where the uh, you get a free character, you can reroll. And if you do decide to reroll and keep getting this, my suggestion is getting Brig from this. So if any of you are starting right now and want to reroll, you can. But in my opinion, you don't really need to. You'll you'll be able to clear every, everything just fine. So the first goal is to get to stage 10-10. So you go into adventure once you get to, or sorry, stage 1-4. Once you get to stage 1-4, a thing called selective summon will come up and that will be where we will transition to. So I will see you in a minute. All right, so once you have completed stage 1-4, you're going to end up getting taken back to the main lobby again, and they're going to want you to do one summon. So with the one summon, this is always going to be a three-star character. There's nothing you can do to change it. It's always a three-star character. Uh, it's random. It's terms of which three-star character, but it will always be a three-star character. And then we're going to be getting into selective summon. So selective summon is one of the most important things on a new account uh, as to determining the like long-term power level of your account. So in Selective Summon, I will go ahead and go over the two characters right now that are the number one picks. So I have shaken up everything with suggesting Destina. Um, I suggest a character called Destina because she has some of the it, she has the most PvP potential of any of the free characters you can get. All the other characters are bad pretty much even for PvE, but I'll go through them all with you as well. But Destina, I'll go over her first. She's a five-star Soul Weaver, so that means healer. So with the five star healer, she is able to fully revive your team. And the reason why she's so good is she gives herself extra stats. She's super easy to gear for newer players to get into early PVP. And she gives you an entire mechanic. So this is a strategy turn-based game. Having the more mechanics and options whenever you are picking your characters gives you infinite more power on your account, essentially. And the thing with PVE in this game is PVE is very easy. Um, at least the PV you need to clear with all characters. You can use almost anything you really feel like, and you can clear basically all PVE. There are certain things that have restrictions. We'll go over those, and I'll give you teams for everything as we go along. But that is the reason we are picking this. So she gives you a revive, and she is not really replaceable by anything except for extremely rare characters that you likely will not get in your first year or two of even playing. So she just covers a role that is not really replaceable for PvP. She is used in the highest level of PvP in the game. There was We have a big tournament every year, and she was picked in a large majority of those games played at the highest, highest level. So the second character within this is a character called Asaria. Asaria is going to be uh, the, the old choice that everyone would tell you to get. The official Epic 7 Discord will still tell you to pick this. If, if you tell them you picked Destina, they're going to give you crap. They're like, oh, you're following Deity's Guide. Uh, look at you, nerd. Um, but the official Discord is... They will give you the advice of the old ways of clearing things, but they are more PvE focused. But again, I with playing this game and seeing the longevity or how long this game's been around, most people end up quitting the game. Um, majority of people that start this game end up quitting. It's probably like that for most games. But I think more people would stick with the game if there was other advice given. And I think I did a great job of that, showing that in the, my last new player guide. I was able to get a th couple thousand people to Masters RTA, which is a huge, huge deal. And just getting people to actually understand the game and stick with it. So Asaria though, she is just really, really good for all PVE content. She pairs well with one of the characters we're gonna be getting. So if your goal of playing Epic Seven is PVE, and that's you want to try it and that's all you really care about is giving it a go she may be your best pick so if you decide to do that that is up to you um, but she is super super good don't get me wrong she's super good in pve she's not a bad character a lot of people last time thought i was saying she's a bad character she's not 
very good. But if your goal is PvP and actually playing this game for everything that it is and not leaving out half or probably 90% of what this game is past playing it for a month, then take Destina. And trust me, you will not regret it. So the way Selective Summon works now, let's get into Selective Summon. The way Selective Summon works is you are going to get one five star of either a hero or an artifact. Then you're going to get two four star characters and two four stars uh, artifacts in every single pull that you do. So no matter what, you're going to be getting those things. So our goal here is to get either Asaria or Destina. That's it. And you can do this infinite times. There's no reason to reroll your account. Um, you can just take the same account and you can do this a million times if you want to. And then second though, so you can only get one five star. So it means we're not gonna be taking a five star artifact and you can only get one. So we cannot roll for t multiple five stars. It just, it's not able to do that. So we'll be taking Destina on this account. If you go with this area, that's fine. But for our secondary characters are, uh, if you click record summon, you can record one that you think is good and keep summoning. So I click that. So it's gonna save this one and then I can keep summoning and see if we get a better one. And then if we do get a better one, then uh, if we want to keep going and it's not exactly what we want, we can click record again and pick which one we want to keep. And then you can keep doing this infinite times until, uh, so you just click record, it'll save this one instead. And you can do this as many times as you want to until you get exactly what you want. And then once you get what you want, you click confirm, pick one of the two, whether it's your recorded one or the active one, and you take it. So. While we're summoning, the, you, since we're getting two four-star heroes and four, two four-star artifacts, the only heroes, in my opinion, that are worth getting for a new player for four stars are going to be Rose or Croza. Croza is my preferred choice for this. You do not have to get him, but he is going to, he has the highest percentage win rate in Wyvern 13, which is one of the farming stages that you'll be spending a lot of your time in. So he has a highest percentage win rate, but the math on it is like he will win uh, 98 out of 100 runs in comparison to another character who would win 92 out of 100 runs. So there's reasonings behind that. We won't go into it just for sake of making this faster, but that is why I say get Crozet. But if you don't get him, there are a bunch of other free options that you can use for that front tank and it will not matter. So. I suggest getting Crozet though. He is a water knight. Or if you get Rose, she will work the same. She's not as high win rate, but she will still work the same. So now the four star artifacts. There are three artifacts that if you get, it is good. Wonders Potion Vial is very, very good to get from this. Aureus is very good. And then Taga Hells is the most important. So if I were you and you're wanting to re-roll for the perfect starter, it'd be Taga Hells, Destina, or Saria if you decide to go that route, plus Crozet. Those three, you're good to go. If you want the perfect, perfect start, it would be Destina, uh, Aureus, or Aureus, or Wonder Switch Vial, and then one Taga Hells, and then your Destina. That would be the perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll, and I'll show you guys what I end up taking, and then we'll get on to the next part of the guide. Okay, so I'm not gonna be super picky with the guide um, portion because I wanna show multiple options once we get to Wyvern, so I'm not gonna have Crozet for this. But I did get a Destina, and I did get Wonder's Potion Vial, so that I'm gonna show that's good enough. You can just go ahead and take this and go with it. So you don't have to be super picky, but if you do be picky, it will just, it'll just make things a little bit easier for you in the long run. So I'm just gonna hit okay, and we're gonna take the one with the potion vial and move on. Our four star characters we don't care about. Um, so let's go ahead and hit confirm. We got potion vial as the only other thing I suggested. So now that we're into this, sometimes you'll have free summons. Um, depending on when you start the game. I'm gonna go ahead and rip these just for fun. We'll see what we get. But if you don't have these, it's not a big deal. It, you don't have to worry about it. If I get anything good, I'm not gonna use it. So we go ahead and skip and we got a four star artifact. That was it. So now we just go ahead and move on. What we're going to be doing is setting Destina on our team. So just know Destina is only on our team temporarily. Eventually we are going to get a character called Tamarin. Once we clear, it's at the very end of this guide video, we will be pulling for our first character, Tamarin. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, your Sky Stones, do not spend a single Sky Stone. We are going, I will be showing you the best way to spend your resources. Do not spend a single Sky Stone until I tell you to do so, which will be not until like day four. So one thing with this guide is we are going to be using a lot of Sky Stones, which is the summon currency or premium currency of this game. You get quite a ton at the beginning of the game. We're gonna be spending a large majority, not a majority, but a large amount of that on refreshing stamina because you will run out of stamina. Well, the reason we are doing that is because by using that as stamina, you're going to then be able to, instead of summons, you're going to be able to progress your account from a one month account to like a four month old account in a 30 day or one month period. So the thing is, again, with this game, it is a character, not, or it's a gear gotcha game, not a character gotcha game. So with, for every character you pull, 
there are going to be six pieces of gear you need to get for them. So the gear and getting good gear is quite hard in this game, but it's not as hard as people make it out to be. I will be making a very dumbed down guide video or a series on gear for this. So last one I did, it was way too complicated watching back. I learned, I learned a lot of mistakes I made on last guide. This guide will be infinitely better and easier to follow. So just know that the reason we're going to be doing that is because most people quit this game and when they quit this game they're at the point where they have 40 five star characters they have a ton of cool characters with no gear and they cannot play pve they can they can barely do a lot of the pve and they just don't know what to do but by using our sky stones and getting our account set up early and then only spending sky stones on characters which are good or eventually if there's a character you like and your account's established it's not going to matter if you just pull for a character you like and want to try them out but until you get your account stabilized, it's not smart to just blow Sky Stones and summon whatever character. Even if it's a good character, if you can't use it at that moment, a lot of times it's good to skip it. So now we're going to be going ahead and, like I said, making our team. Our team is not going to matter for right now. It's going to completely change once we get to stage 2-2. Um, so we'll just put three characters on here because we're going to be getting a fourth character once we clear like one more stage. So just go into Adventure, do the next stage. Um, it'll be this, uh, hit this, and then you're going to be getting to a stage after this, which you are going to be able to then unlock auto battle. I'll just show you how to do it now. Once you get to that stage, you're going to click this. This is a two times speed option, and you're going to click auto battle, and you'll just let it auto battle until you get to stage 2-2. So I will meet you back once you get to stage 2-2. Uh, whenever you finish the stage after this, you're going to be getting Mercedes and she will take up the fourth slot without you having to click anything. If you did set a hero here, you're going to have to go switch that out, but you don't, you don't have to. You can just use whatever hero. But all right, I will be back in just a minute. All right, so once you have cleared stage 2-2, you could have went and got your Moonlight Blessing character early, but we did 2-2 because this is where you get Tyria. So we're going to be setting up our story clearing team all in one go, and I'm going to be going over the... Moonlight Blessing. So Moonlight Blessing, nothing has changed with it as to what we're taking, but the character tiers have changed slightly. So you grab tier real quick and then we go into this and we are going to end up taking Spectre Tenebria. Now, Arbiter Vildred used to be the number one pick. Spectre Tenebria is still the number one pick, but Moonlight Ken would actually be pick number two. So if you happen to have Spectre Tenebria, you take Moonlight Ken. He is insane right now in the game. Uh, it's really cool because this character was really bad for a long time. So those of you that don't know, Epic 7 does balance patches every six weeks where they take old characters and buff them and or rework their kit or buff them. And they usually never nerf characters, but they always buff other characters. So usually when they do that, we see an entire meta shift and sometimes uh, characters get buffed and it makes old characters actually usable and really good again. So as every six weeks, we basically have a new fresh uh, update on top of new characters coming out every two or so weeks. Um, so the Epic 7 keeps their game very, very fresh. For a five-year-old game, having it still feel fresh is very nice. So if you happen to be following the guy and you've accidentally taken a character that isn't Spectre Tenebria, you can reset your Moonlight Blessing. So you see the button right there. So this is just a free way to get one of the top MO5 characters in the game, which Moonlight 5 characters are going to be just for, they're designed for a PVP, but this one works for a lot of PVE too, which is why she is going to be the number one take. She will clear a, almost everything for you. So now let's go ahead and set up our story clearing team. So our story clearing team is going to be Spectre Tenebria, and we have our Free Spirit Terrier. So Free Spirit Terrier we use because she comes plus 15. Skill Awakenings of this game are very important. Having a character that is a damage dealer with already max Skill Awakenings is amazing. So this will be your team. If you want to adjust your team, I wouldn't personally. The only things you can maybe change out are Raz for maybe if you got Crozet. But I personally think it, it would be better to use Crozet at first. But we need to end up six-starring Raz anyway. So having him go through the story and leveling him up as you go is not a bad thing. So And then in terms of Destina, the only thing I'd trade Destina for is Tamarin. And we will be trading Destina for Tamarin at the end of this video once we unlock Tamarin's side story and summon on her if we get her. If we don't get her, we'll replace her eventually. But Destina will be your healer to start. And then once you get Tamarin, Destina will sit in your box basically until we get into like day 14. So just know Destina, we got her. But that is we got her for a later date um, after day one. So now once you got all of that, our goal today is to clear as much of this as we can. This is going to be Adventure's Path, and then Tyria also has her own missions. So to clear these missions, you just do whatever it says. So this one's clear 1-4. This one was to um, 
select or complete selective summon. And then now it says equip a hero with one piece of equipment. So we can go into this. Um, if we click uh, down at the bottom and click go, it'll just take us to where we need to go to equip them. So we can go ahead and put this on. And we can go ahead and just put uh, another helmet on. That's fine on Dustina. So you now have free gear removal. This was not a part of last guide, but we currently now have free gear removal. So you can just go ahead and slap gear on all your characters and it is fine. Uh, we'll, we'll end up changing all of this later, of course, but just put whatever you have uh, on all this gear, junk gear. It's just here for the time being. In terms of artifacts, it doesn't matter what artifacts you put on your characters at the beginning either, but putting them on gives a little stat bonus. So if you did get Wondrous Potion Vial, you put it on her. This will go on Tamarind once we get her. Spectre Cheever, if you get Taga Hells, you can put Taga Hells on her. But if you don't have it, just put anything. If you have a four star, any three star that has a damage thing could be good. Um, Daydream Joker could be really nice. And then for Artieria, she actually gets her own artifact through doing her mission. So I'll go show you that real quick. So as you keep completing these, it'll have a, an, an enhanced equipment plus three. But down here we get Tieria, and then it wants us to reach level 20 with her. So we click that, click go. It'll take us to their level up portion. Now we give her the two penguins that it gave us. That will complete that challenge. So now we back out of this, and it actually will have uh, give us this to awaken tier to two stars so you go in then you click awaken down here which we cannot do yet so we have to clear stage one two dash ten before we get any further with her which is fine so just continue to do all of these as they pop up now i will come back after a little bit and show where my count is after i clear like maybe stage um, like chapter four or something, I'll come back and give a little update. So, and then go over a few more things. So you're gonna wanna watch every, every portion of this video if you can, because there are gonna be little tidbits in every little section that are worth watching, or uh, worth learning at least. So I will be back after we clear a little bit more content. Okay, so once you have cleared stage 2-10, you're going to be to a point where your account should be ranked 10. So this is one of the, I keep saying most important things in the video, but this is one of the most important things in the video. So I'm going to cover a few things real quick. Once you reach level 10, you can join a guild. So guilds in Epic 7 are insanely important for you to get into. Uh, the earlier you get into them, the better. I will explain why and a couple of quick guild things. But also we have a the best guild system set up in our Discord for new players. We have 150 guilds currently. That's like 3,000 to 4,000 people. At the time, make this video. If you're watching this three months from now, we probably have to over 200. Uh, we add new guilds almost daily. Um, but with that, we are always getting an influx of new players trying the game. Some people quit. Some people stick with it. So all the guilds are constantly getting you guys to recruit so the guilds stay full and as active as possible, which is really big. So whenever you're getting to an, a guild, the first thing, once you join the Discord, you have to be in the Discord to get into one of our guilds. So if you want to try to find a guild without it, that's up to you. It's very, very hard. Um, that's why we created this system for you all. But whenever you get into a guild, one of the most important things every day is to request the highest rarity of Wyvern Claws. So as you see here, we have just a bunch of different rarities of Wyvern Claws. We have a couple of guild rules. The reason we do this is because it's the most efficient for all members of your guild. If you see people requesting catalysts or anything in your guild, your guild's not going to be very efficient. So if you would like to leave and join on Vards, you can, even if you're already an established player, then you can do one of our guilds. We also need more guild leaders. So we always need more guild leaders, so if you're going to play this game and you love it so far as you're playing, you find out, I love this game and are willing to be one, uh, we would definitely like to have more. <clears throat> so you will want to request this every single day and then donate the max that you can every day. You can earn up to 200 points of donating every day, which is equal to 200 Brave Crests. So you'll usually get about 180 per day, or it's, it's I would say on average about one, 150, 120 per day, but you can get up to 180. So. With that, these Brave Quests are a super important currency, uh, which we'll go into soon. Next, you are going to want to donate gold every single day. This will give you 50 Brave Quests, or Brave Crests, I keep saying it wrong, every single day. So this is huge, and donating gold gives the ability for your guild leaders and guild vice captains to buy buffs. The sooner you get into the guild, the sooner you start receiving buffs. You receive a 10% EXP buff, which lets you level your characters faster, and a 10% gold buff. Having these right away on an account will make a huge, huge difference over time of playing. So the sooner you get into one, the better. So now next up, you will try to donate as many proof of courage as you get. You get these for doing the 
I don't know what they're called, but they pop up. Urgent missions, that's what they're called. You will get them for doing urgent missions, and then you'll also get them for doing world boss, which we'll talk about later. There's a lot of other guild things we'll cover later. In terms of guild war, once you join, you'll just click this inside of guild war defense. Just hit auto assign, and we'll be going over guild wars. You'll learn how to do that. It's best to do guild wars and even lose your attacks. You just lose every single attack at first. It's fine, but as long as you do them, you're going to be getting this uh, this currency, the commander's armband. So earning these currencies, let's... Let's go over why they're important. There will be a member shop. You get so, These are some of the best artifacts in the game that you can get for free. So by doing those, you can start buying these artifacts over time. And these are super, super important to get. They are free. So And they're five-star artifacts, which is huge. And then there's other currency you can get within this. You can get the Spirit Blooms. You will buy that every month. Molagora, you will buy every week. Uh, at first, you will not use any Commander Armbands except on these artifacts. So save all your Commander's Armbands. And then next up, you will end up buying these Catalyst Chests. Anything that costs Brave Crest, basically you're going to buy. Now, at the end of each week, as long as you're doing everything, logging in and uh, donating as much as you can, you will end up with Overflow Brave Crest, which is super important because Artifact Charms are the most limited thing in this game. So for all the extra work you put in, this is the only place to really get Artifact Charms besides your weekly logins and things like that. So this is a huge, huge progression on your overall account as being able to buy a few of these extra every single week. So guilds are very, very important. Also, we have our weekly missions. Once you join a guild, you'll end up completing these missions, giving you these rewards every week. You get an elemental summon. You're going to get uh, transmit stones. And then these blue boxes are actually one of the highest value items in the game. You do get quite a bit of them, but you will use every single one of them, especially as a new player. This is how you end up targeting specific gear to make the power level of your account go up quicker. Um, so you also get some more commander armbands and other things within this. So that is guilds. Very, very easy. If you want to join Discord, a link will be down in the description and at the pinned comment in this. But we, like I said, good luck on finding a guild otherwise, because that's one of the hardest things for new players to accomplish. Now, next up, I will be live streaming every single episode of uh, this. Uh, all my progress, every button I click, I'm actually playing another account to do that and this is a separate account so if you want to see every single day there is a live stream version of it so you can play alongside of it i did not do that for the last guide and i think for this guide it's going to help you guys a ton just to have that version of it so i'm putting in a ton of extra work this time so if you guys ever want to check those out just to see exactly what i did throughout everything every single click except for some farming i'll farm without streaming because farming i just do auto runs at the side which you'll see later but every time i'm actually clearing content or completing challenges that will be live streamed lastly for this part epic 7 is very extensive for your phone i destroyed an iphone 7 I destroyed the iPhone 7 using it. So as you keep playing, you will eventually see this, that your phone is going to take a beating from this. So with that, I use emulators for PC. I use LD Player. I've used it for five years. So I've been playing up, that's been using it since I started playing Epic 7 and it's been the best emulator. I've tried other ones, but I do have a link to that. It does support me. So if you download it, it will help me out. But you do not have to use LD Player. If you want to use Google Play ba Games Beta, that's fine. I don't get anything for these other ones, but Google Play ba uh, Beta is fine. Um, Bluestacks works for some people. I personally hated it when I used it, but some people like Bluestacks or other emulators, whatever. If you're already using an emulator, you can go ahead and just use it. But if you're having trouble on that emulator, you might want to try LD Player because for me, it's just worked the best. And most content creators I know all use LD Player. So now that is all for this little segment. The next things you're going to be working on is just keep going through this. So you're going to keep getting this. Once you get this free gear set for Tieri, you put it on her. You don't really need to level it up at all. You can level up the sword a little if you want. That's going to be the best piece for you. But you just keep working on this. Reach level 30 with Tieri is going to be the next mission for me. And then in this, it's Explore Labyrinth. So I'm going to go ahead and show Labyrinth real quick. I'm going to just go into it and give you a couple quick things. Labyrinth is going to be the same for everybody at the very beginning. I actually cleared up to chapter four. So we also unlocked Abyss. So let's just do two things real quick. Let's start with Abyss just to get this out of the way. So Abyss, this is going to be a way to get a ton of early game rewards. And, it, and as you get further into it, the rewards get better and better. So you can clear up to five floors a day naturally, three, or three floors a day naturally, and then five floors if you use a leaf to buy more currency. So as you see, you can use one leaf to get an extra two. I highly, highly suggest doing this for the first week you play the game at least. 
Um, it, you need to get to Abyss 450 for one of the challenges. And if you're not spending these, it's going to take you an extra few days to get there. So you don't have to do this, but I highly, highly suggest using one leaf until you clear stage 50. And you can slow down a bit if you want. I will have, I already have guides up uh, of the harder floors, um, but I still need to make guides for floor 90 through 100. So that's going to be what I'm working on today after finishing this. So those will all be there. I will give you the teams to beat it using the characters that we were using throughout the guide series. So it's not as hard as you think it is. It's I will show you the easy ways to beat all the stages up to there. Past 100, Abyss is annoying. And I do not think I will be making videos for that, at least not for the foreseeable future. But my goal is to get you to at least Abyss 100. By the time you're there, you'll probably have a pretty good understanding of the game and you'll be able to uh, figure those out either yourself or use other people's guides that they currently have for them. So that is where I'm stopping for Abyss for this. So just be aware of that. But you want to clear all five of these. You just use the same story team that we're already using and it will clear as you keep going. It'll clear probably all the way up to close to Abyss 82, I think is like when it starts getting a bit harder. There's one floor that I'll go over. I think it's floor 63. Um, once we get close to that point, but overall that is abyss. Just try to make sure you do that You are going to get some free extra entries for some challenges And if you go to the rank up pack, there's some free stuff you can claim in the shop that will give you an additional 10 um, Floors that you can do so do just as many as you can every day and utilize all of that stuff every single day So by day like six or seven, I think we'll be about to stage 50 now We are going to go into labyrinth labyrinth is going to be a Very very important thing too. You need to clear as far into labyrinth every single day that you can so i'm going to go over one important thing with that but our goal is to get to malika's the consciousness and fully clear it before we get into the hell raid portion so we will be getting malika's consciousness because that is guaranteed specific sets that we can use to get into early pvp whereas these just give single pieces that do not give you full sets so we will do labyrinth or raid eventually but our first goal is clearing everything up to malika's consciousness this takes almost a month to just do this by itself so a lot of people that always say to get a Saria, they use it in hell, uh, Raid and Hell Raid, but, but you're not even going to need that in the first 30 days. So after 30 days, if we find that you want a Saria to make this easier, you can just pull her on Story Summon. So, uh, but you will have your Destina for if you start getting to uh, RTA and trying it out on day 20, which is usually the goal, at least, at, at least attempting it and seeing how it is. You'll lose most games, but is what it is. Next up is Spirit Altar. So Spirit Altar, just a real quick overview. There's the five elements at the beginning of the game. This is going to be, all of them are open, but once you get past the beginning, uh, these are only open on certain days. Weekends have all of them open, but each one has a specific day that it's typically open on. So with this, this is how you're going to awaken your characters. You will have to farm this quite a bit, and there's also specialty changes. Specialty changes take the most out of this. So I'm going to tell you right now, try to avoid doing any specialty changes at the beginning. Uh, you can start them, but try not to finish any of them. The first one we want to finish is going to be Raz. So specialty changes, as you can see here, are right here. It unlocks after completing 10-10. So we don't want, if you decide to go way ahead, do not finish the specialty change because the first one you finish, you get 300 runes for free of the color character that you end up finishing. You can start one and start doing the challenges, but make sure to not click complete if you end up finishing a full one. You can have two going at one time. Um, and then if you switch them off, whatever you did stays for the progress. So you can start working on certain ones if you'd like. I will go over that later. But eventually we're going to switch Raz in and have Raz be the first one that we complete. So now with this, we are going, which Raz is the main character right here. Now, another thing is going to be your events. So there will be different events that you will do every single day. So the first one is going to be this account is actually logged in for two days because I didn't finish what I need to do. You want to try to clear all of this stuff that you can. And uh, at day seven, you're going to end up getting some really good rewards. And then your overall rewards, you end up getting a five star summon ticket off this. So you get a random five star, which is really, really good. Now, there is also going to be the daily event. This is always something in the game. This changes every few weeks and it completely resets. You want to you for every five stages you clear of either of arena adventure um different things it will give you these points here and once you do 20 stages of venture 20 runs of hunt you are able to claim all of this and then once you claim these four tickets it's going to be different each time sometimes there'll be different items you claim you click on use it'll take you to the uh where you use them so this one you can spend the wheel four times per day get a couple extra rewards and then receive a bonus reward so this is a lot of free stuff that you get every single day for playing it is very important to remember to do this each day 
And then at the end of that, for each ticket you get over time, you are able to get these rewards here, which are nothing crazy, but these are always, any extra reward you get for playing this game is always nice. Next, you're going to have the call to adventure. Once you clear stage 10-10, you are going to be getting, I believe this is a five-star summon ticket, and you're going to be getting nine free covenant summons per day. You want to reach this at the end of this guide. So I'm going to go and start pushing through that to get there and then once you get this this is going to hopefully give you some good characters you can technically get any character in the game from your covenant summons but the really rare characters are on like a super minuscule chance of getting them but somehow thousands of people got insane characters last time throughout this period so uh maybe you get lucky maybe you don't i never get lucky on it so then you're also gonna be clearing this adventure to new heirs as you're going just keep playing and these will just pop up that you beat them eventually you have to go in and maybe do specific things but just watch all of these events and then uh, toward the end of the video we're going to be trying to get our hunt challenge event started so once we clear 10-10 we will go in and try to get this going and this will be what we'll be working on on day two so that is it for all of this. Now, uh, the Labyrinth thing that I'm going to show is whenever you're clearing Labyrinth, you are going to use the team that we are already using for the first few days. Eventually, we will adjust this because there's a mechanic called morale. So when you go into lab, you have 50 points. That 50 points, every square that you walk over subtracts one point. Every battle you do, I believe, takes seven points to finish the battle. So with only 50, you can only move so far. It's like a little mini game inside the game. And then when you're f clearing these first stages, you will have these portals. You can actually click on the portal once you've been there and teleport and it uses three morale. So sometimes it's best to teleport to the portal. If you ever go back into a labyrinth stage and haven't cleared all of it yet, you can teleport to the portal that is closest to squares that you have not finished. So you teleport, use three morale, and then start clearing whatever to get these chests. So these chests usually have sky stones and some other uh, rewards usually... Um, ancient coins so once you do finish these stages though you need to always make sure you leave at the area that it says so if you leave through this one right here you click it and then you want to there will be a portal here you click the portal to leave the stage you want to leave at the area once you used all your morale to go in and it, it lets you go to the next stage once you reach that point so you always want to, at least the first time you leave, you need to leave through the spot that's highlighted like this to make sure you open up the next labyrinth. So always do that. Two more things real quick. Hoochie. Hoochie is a shop. Once you open the shop, this is something that resets every single day. I will cover this again, but buy any charms that he has in there. And if he has bookmarks, you can buy those. The catalysts are also worth buying. Do not buy the friendship bookmarks or any of the other items, the uh, art, the two-star artifacts he sells, but always buy your charms. This is one of your big uh, ways to get charms going through the game, especially right side charms. If you see necklace charms, ring charms, those are super, super important to buy from him. Next up is going to be camping. So once you have used any of your morale, you will have the ability to camp, which I will show real quick. Uh, once you camp, your best camping for this team for the first few days this is going to give you extra morale. You, you you do this once your morale reaches down below a certain point. So as your morale is starting to get toward the end, you can camp, but you can only camp on corner square spots, spots where you stop. So you could camp like here. Um, anytime you're in one of the teleport areas, you can camp, but you will wait until your morale is lower because this is a way to get a little bit more morale or movement squares per time. And your best ones for this are going to be joyful memory on uh tamarin it gives you the most points for this team and sad memory there is a calculator to use as we're going getting into deeper abyss or sorry deeper labyrinth to get higher morale but that is how you do this so sorry i don't have an exact uh thing it'll just take extra time this video is already insanely long but there's just so much to cover on day one you're going to probably end up going back in this video and watching things over and over but Again, just a recap of this little segment. Join a guild. Link is down in the description. Join the Discord if you want to join one of our guilds. I highly, highly recommend it. Start becoming part of the community. And then second is LD player. Don't destroy your phone playing this game. Find some kind of emulator on your PC if you can. If you can't, if you have an iPad, that's also great. But I burned. So auto battling is something in this game. And it's what you normally do for playing the game. And I was auto battling at my old job before I started doing content creation full time. And my phone had the auto battle thing burnt into the screen forever. So anything I was doing, I always had the auto battle burnt in. 
So, and that was a reasonably new phone at the time. I don't know how well other new phones are, or if you have an old phone, I'm just telling you, try not to kill your phone doing this because it, it will feel really, really bad. So that's all I got for this segment. Our next thing is I'm just going to go ahead and one, okay, one last thing is if you yield out of a labyrinth run, it does not use your currency. It did not use the currency. The only time it uses a currency is if you leave through one of the portals. So you need to make sure that never just leave a labyrinth after you beat it, make sure you go through a portal. Or if you just go in to check the shop, you will leave, which we'll show that another day. So the next thing we're going to be working on is going to be the uh, challenges here so that it is explore labyrinth for the next challenge. So I'm going to go through and do that. And then just uh, whenever you need to spend ancient coins, you will just buy any charms of whatever value. I'll go ahead and show that to there's so much stuff to show you guys, and I want to cover as much as I possibly can. So whatever you come into here, you are going to be buying lesser artifact charms and uh, great, or in the greater charms. It doesn't matter which one you buy. It's actually the same value. So three smalls equals one purple. Three purples equals one red. But you can't buy red from this, but just know that's how the charms work. So I, be I believe it's three purples equals one red. It might be more. It might be five purples equals one red. Reds are really big charms. I'm, I'm not sure the math on exactly, but there's always equivalent value of some sort. So uh, it does not matter which one you buy. Just buy whatever. But I highly suggest either buying a ring or necklace charm for that challenge. Because buying the 22 to 60 accessory chest, we're going to, uh, after a certain point, ignore pretty much any gear that's under T70 that we get for free. So most of the gear that you get early, early game, you'll just ignore that you get it and because all of our gear sets are going to be coming from this hunt challenge. We're going to be clearing all the hunt challenges as quick as we can just to get our gear set up. So now I'm going to go ahead and start working on things. I will come back and show characters uh, in terms of what how they're geared and everything too. This is the current gear. I just put the free set on that. Raz just on free HP gear for now. Since we have free gear move, we can slap that off later. Destina just four piece set and Spectre Seabre is just on attack set. So real quick overview of gear. It gives... Stat bonuses, if you complete the set, you do not have to worry about the stat bonuses too, too much, especially early game. Sometimes you'll mix things. Uh, you don't like say there are four piece sets and two piece sets. Sometimes you'll put a four piece set on and then mix two different sets and not get that stat bonus because the gear has higher rolls than what you want. So that is one early thing to say is do not worry about the set too, too much in terms of the two piece set. Uh, for a lot of characters, but early game, just put the attack sets on. It's going to give you a big stat bonus and then just start farming from here. So I will come back once I am going to have a lot of stuff that I can show again. But just know this video is probably going to be an hour because I'm combining day one and day two of last player guide basically into one day. So I will be back once we get to a certain stopping point. All right, real quick, I also want to reiterate the fact that once this comes up, you have the ability to summon one time to get to the next portion. I, again, do not spend any sky stones and save all of your bookmarks. We are going to be summing on Tamarin at the end of this video. So save everything you have up until you clear stage 10-10. We will also not be using any sky stones once we summon. We will only be using our bookmarks. You should around have around 200 bookmarks at that point and like 4,000 sky stones, I think, is the value. But once you get to this point, if you do end up using a bookmark to summon on that, it is fine. But you can also go to Friendship Summon and then just do one of those instead. And if you have to trade in your clovers for it, that's really the only thing you trade in for those. So you can spend your friendship points. So like right here, I could buy two summons. So you can just do that to clear it. But I highly suggest saving all summons if you're going to be following the guide because we're going to be spending things very, very efficiently. At least in my opinion is efficient. But just real quick reminder there. Okay, so now we're to a point where I'm going to cover arena softly. So once you get to a point where you have to do an arena battle for arena, you're going to come in here. It's going to give you a little bit of a like story. You can watch that. But we are going to go ahead and we can skip this tutorial just to make this faster. And I'm going to set a arena defense team. Just throw any four characters on here at first. It does not matter. You will not be getting attacked probably very much, at least for the first few days. So just put whatever team you, you want to put on there. It's fine. We will be adjusting that later, obviously, as we get stronger. But the most important thing as a new player is you're going to be coming in and only doing these. So you're going to have your NPC challenges and then you get Sky Stones from this. I know the Sky Stones look tempting, but the sooner you do these, you get more points for doing this. You get five versus three and getting conquest points early game is super important and you want to get your rank up as fast as possible. So with this, you can look at the arena info, and as you um, climb, you get 
first time promotion bonuses. So as we climb out of bronze, which is super easy, we're going to be getting all of these rewards. And then as we get out of silver, we're gonna be getting all of these rewards. At the end of each week after Sunday, you are getting a weekly reward. So you wanna make sure to climb as high as you can before every Sunday. And then you will be getting a bigger reward depending on that. You will fall down a little bit at the next week if you do not make it to at least the base of the next rank. So if you're gold five, you'll stay gold five. But if you're silver one, you'll fall to silver two. So you always want to be at least the next rank up if you can get there. Sometimes it is worth spending uh, some refreshes for it. To get there, you have to spend 30 sky stones to get an extra five flags, and then you win a few fights. And then that way, the difference, you can see you basically get your sky stones back. As you get higher, you definitely get your sky stones back. So the difference between gold and masters, you get 450 a week versus 360. So if you spend uh, 60 sky stones, you will get that back. Plus, you get the free re or the resources for doing that. So it's super worth it to do at the end of each week. Just make sure you're as high as you can get on Sunday. Uh, if you want to spend some extra sky stones early on to climb, you can. So with going into this, this team right here, our normal story clearing team, you will be using this all the way up to challenger. So the nice thing with having Destina is you can just use this team. If you want to, eventually we'll switch out Raz for another character, most likely. Maybe, we don't really have to, but you can use this team right here all the way up to challenger, which is huge. Sometimes there'll be teams that you have to skip as you climb higher, but at the beginning, it's very, very easy. So whenever you're getting into these fights, you just click go in, it'll say characters that are ungeared half the time and you just have to ignore it and you hit auto. And then once you hit auto, you'll just keep clearing these until you're out of flags. That's all you have to do. So at the beginning, you're just gonna one shotting these are bot fights. And then once you get past the bot fights, you're gonna end up fighting even easier enemies. So another thing with this is you get five flags, you regenerate one per hour, use these as much as you can as a new player. Like, yes, I know you can't be playing the game 24 seven, but if you happen to log in five hours, just and you have like 10 minutes, this would be what you would go do is burn those flags back down. Another thing is you can use these friendship points to buy five flags a day. Highly, highly suggest doing this through the whole first 30 days. And as we get further and the teams get harder, I will show you a way to burn your flags without having to beat the opponent and still getting rewards for it. So make sure you buy this every time. I'm going to go ahead and do all my attacks. And then after this, though, I do not think there will be another thing I'll cover until we clear a bunch more story. So we're going to have to do like Spirit Altar and things like that. But just keep clearing through this and do make sure you use your 10 arena flags that you have right now. And every time you remember to log in every five hours or so, try to burn those as much as you can and skip out on doing the NPC challenges for now. Trust me, we will end up doing those later. But for right now, it is best to climb as far as possible. You will end up getting more Skystone return early game doing that and just overall better resources. OK, I will be back soon. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the video. Trust me, I'm working. It's, there's just so much stuff to cover. So this is going to be a little like checkup as to where we're at within um, clearing challenges and what your team should look like. So those of you guys know you're on the right track. Again, if you guys want to watch me do this live, um, go to the 2024 new player live stream. I'll put um, a link to that down in the description too. So you can see every, every single day of it. But uh, we're going to go into here. So we are to the point where we need to clear stage 7-10 in Adventure. And then after we clear 7-10, um, in terms of Arteria, we are about to finish this too. We just need a five-star promoter. And now that we can clear a hunt with her, so we'll finish that. We just unlocked hunts with the stage that we completed. So from here, we're also going to look at all of my characters. But overall, that's like the main thing. So I just want you to sh or show like that's where I'm at specifically. And I'll show the character builds currently that we are using and I'm gonna show uh, getting, cleaning up gear. So as you see, we're to chapter eight and we're still just full autoing every stage with my Tyria geared like this, Vector Tenebria geared like this, Raz geared like this. We're gonna uh, end up four starring Raz soon or if you already wanna do it, you can, but I'm waiting till I fully uh, are to five star her before I do any of them myself. And then Destina is still the same, just free gear. So nothing really upgraded. Steny, I did put the set, the attack set that you get you don't have to upgrade it too much. Um, one thing with upgrading gear is you cannot sell or upgrade gear with gear anymore. You have to sell gear to get charm dust to upgrade. So it's fine if you upgrade a piece, you can sell it. You're going to get reduced charm dust. I wouldn't upgrade this beginning gear too, too much. Uh, you, you will upgrade whenever you get the set from Tyria. You will upgrade that though. Quite a bit as a speed set. You just put it on Tyria. So when you get this set here for five starring her, put it on Tyria. And for five starring a character, all you have to do is go in and we'll just see how close we are for it. Or actually, I don't think it will, it'll even let us, will it? 
So we don't have nearly enough, but uh, two five-star character, you just hit auto-select. And if you don't have the exact runes it'll do, or blooms, you can trade blooms in for blooms. And also, if you guys need some blooms, I'm going to go over one thing real quick. You're going to have your Breath of Orbises that you're getting through going through the story. I'm going to give a Breath of Orbis video soon. But in terms of where you should put your first Breath of Orbises, I'm going to go ahead and hide my face cam for a second here. So this is going to be 313. You're going to just go ahead and set the top left to 313. It's going to be um, just, I guess, the first, first most important one you can do. So go ahead and set this to 313. And then the last two that you have here, we are going to take those and put them in the bottom left. So bottom left, we're going to set this to 111. And I will show you what to do with it. So um, improve that. That one's free to improve. And then you put one in both the left and right side. So put one in each of these. Uh, well, it's going to make me come out and do this tutorial, but I'll I'll show you guys my own tutorial. So now we're going to improve building, do the left side, and then do the right side. After that, we're going to upgrade the bottom right to 333 once we get more Breath of Orbises, but that will be tomorrow. I have a Breath of Orbis guide to make sure yours all looks correct. And if you have using your Breath of Orbises in a uh, different spot than what I have, then you can always go into it, go to improve building, and you can reset them. So if you spent, you can reset. It costs some gold, but it's good to have this set up how I have it set up uh, in the video. So if you did make any mistakes, not a big deal. But this is what I wanted to show here, is if you want to buy these, you can. Uh, you're going to end up buying these no matter what. So we're just going to go ahead and buy a bunch of the gold ones because we're going to be needing to five-star Tyria. So you will get some of that and you just trade Stigma. But now here down in the high command, we are going to be, now that it's 111, we are going to send on a hunt mission and a war mission. So I usually do the two hour ones because they cost one stamina. If you aren't going to be logging into the game as often, you can do this four hour one. It's not bad either. Um, so this is the most cost efficient for stamina. This one is, um, it's still just good. If you're logging every four hours, just use this. It'll take eight stamina every time you do it, but it's not too bad, but since I'm going to be on the count a lot, we are just going to go ahead and do this. You have to put one level 10 character in for each. As you get further, you'll go back and redo this and put characters that give higher bonuses. So you see right here, we have to have one character as level 10. So you see Raz gives no bonus, but uh, we can just sew them in there. And then there we go. We have these going. So you just leave these going. You claim all the time. These are the best things to do because conquest points and ancient coins are um, kind of limited on how many you can get per day. So now from there you can do the steel workshop we will be upgrading the steel workshop a bit with this and we're going to put this at we'll just do the free upgrade for now but then we're going to put this at 333 this is the only one that we put all the way to max yes we will put some into the heart of orbis i know you guys want your free sky stones we will put some into here but you, you'll be able to finish all this by tomorrow at the end of that guide so one last thing i want to cover real quick is gear so you're probably getting to a point where you're getting kind of overflowed on gear and heroes. So with this, you can just sell almost everything. Um, I would say you can sell pretty much everything that you get. Anything that you get at the beginning of the game is going to be um, just trash. Besides the stuff that I showed on my characters currently. Um, as you, I would sell at this point, just clean up your inventory. You could also auto select. But just sell what you have currently. All this free gear is pretty bad. Actually, it's really bad. It's too low tier. Um, going through my guide, we're going to have really good gear really quick. So just go ahead and clean up your inventory so that that way you don't have to worry about it. And lastly, you can go into your heroes. And this is one thing that it's okay to spend sky stones on. If you want to bump this up to 75 early on, you can. Let's just go ahead and do it. We're going to end up putting it at like 100, 150. And over time, you just have to keep upgrading it. And then one way to keep your hero inventory clean is go into here, select your two stars, and transmit them. So you just keep doing that. I'm going to show you guys what to do with duplicate heroes. You want to lock one copy of each hero and then feed them into each other. But we'll go over that probably at the end of the video um, because we're going to do some summons. So I want to show you guys how to clean up after the summons. But that's all I got for this portion. We're going to go back to clearing more of this. Like I said, when you get the set from this, put it on Tiri and level it up and just keep completing this. And I will come back at the end when we are completing or right before we go and do chapter one or chapter 10-10 which is like the first boss of the game, uh, big boss of the game. So I will be back with that. And uh, yeah, all right. One helpful tip though, for those of you trying to six star Tiaria, this will speed it up. You can go in, as you see right here, you click your mailbox, then you go to ongoing events. Now we're gonna go to the Archie seven day growth guide. And since we're on day one, we will have all of these things we can claim. The extra stigma will help us to buy more things to uh, promote her. 
So we'll go ahead and get into grab all those and collect. make sure you collect your tickets again. You need to make sure you're doing this every day you play. And then you can spend the wheel once you get your tickets. This can give you some um, different upgrade materials, some gold. Every It's always just really nice to do. So go ahead and do this. We get our stuff from it. So you'll do all that and then receive it once you've done all four. Next, we have our call to adventure. You can go ahead and claim the items from here. You'll get some stigma, conquest points. You'll get some more things that you can use to promote characters and some extra stigma so we can buy even more of the currency. So you can go ahead and buy this. And then next up we have the Adventures for New Heirs. So with the Adventures for New Heirs, as you claim this stuff, there is going to be these Abyss tokens. Whenever you claim these Abyss tokens from your mailbox, make sure you go and do Abyss before reset. So you see right here, this is 10, nine is gonna be the next one that we get. And then past that, that's all that we can get here. There's also Mission 2s though. So you can go in here and see. This will give us quite a bit of extra stuff too. So we get an extra six small spirit blooms. So let's go ahead and do that. And then now that we've done all this, we can go out and uh, claim all of it. You can re click receive all. I'm not doing it because I have the um, certain items in here that I do not want to pick up since not everyone's going to be getting them, uh, depending on when you start the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and claim everything. I'm actually going to claim all my stamina and be overcapped on stamina, but I'm trying not to claim any of this stuff because the returning player, um, or this is a new player. So we can claim a new player thing, but the returning player stuff you guys won't get, so I'm trying not to claim any of it. So now that we have done this, we can go ahead and back out. Let's go to our forest and let's make some spear blooms. So we're going to end up four starring Raz in this little thing too. So let's go ahead and we'll make 10 of these. And then we have 2100. Let's make two of these. Wait, sorry, make two of these. And then let's go ahead and just make two more of these. So there we go. That should be enough to finish her, we're hoping. So once you go in, you can um, then go to promotion, click auto select, and as you see, it combines the two runes. So once you do that, you auto select and finish this. Next up, we're going to go down to Raz. If we have enough left, we'll promote him too. And then there we go. So now that you promoted them, you'll get the set for Tyria. You can just sell Tyria set that she has on right now, and then you can... Um, put the new set on. So we need to clear a hunt with her too to finish this, but once you get the set, just throw it onto your area. And next up, we're gonna go back through story and we'll come back again, like I said, when we reach 10-10. So that is how you can finish up getting the rest of the Spirit Blooms needed. All right, back when we are finished with, or getting ready for 10-10. Okay, I wanted to make another quick notation in this video. Once you clear the stage 10-3 as you're climbing to 10-10, you are going to be getting an item called the Pegasus Boots. You want to make sure to lock these boots right away. These boots are very, very nice. It's one of the first, or if not, the only early game speed main stat boot you can get. And this might be used on our first Wyvern team, depending on which characters you decide for that. So our Wyvern team is going to end up being any front tank. We're going to grace the growth of front tank, so you guys can just choose from their cigarette, which we all get for free. And then we're going to use Furious, which we all get for free. And then we're going to hopefully use Mui if you pull them or Alexa. If you use Alexa, we're going to need these speed boots for our first initial clear without it. It'll just save us some time and make it to where it'll be much easier for everyone playing the game. So these boots right here, right once you get them, make sure you go out and lock them. Once you lock them, you're good to go. And I'm going to push all the way up to 10-10. I'm going to show, we're going to do a little uh, gear upgrading and make sure that we can clear 10-10. I'll be back with that. All right, what's up, guys? It is time for 1010. So if you look here, this is where I am at. I went back and claimed all the way up to, did all these challenges up to clear stage 10-10 adventure. So go back and make sure you do that. In terms of what my heroes look like, I'll show in a second. One thing real quick, you're going to be getting conquest points. Do not spend any of these yet. I will be showing you the most valuable thing you can spend these on for an early game player. So give me, just wait. I will go over every resource that you see. I will tell you the right way to spend them. So the longer you wait, the better you're going to spend the resources. That's one thing. That'd be seven. The more you learn about the game, the better you're going to spend your stuff. Now your ancient coins. Your ancient coins can always be used to buy these. It doesn't matter, again, which kind of charms you buy. I always split that up between the two of whatever I'm buying. So now we're going to go in and look at our characters. <clears throat> so with our characters, these are the stats that we have on them. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my face cam for just a second. So this is the T area. You can upgrade the T area a little bit more if you'd like. So uh, her main things you can upgrade to get more damage out would be the boots. And these this gear is going to be used for our early Wyvern team. So you can just go ahead and upgrade this if you'd like. 
just to get a little bit more damage out of the thing is this stage is a little bit harder than all the other stages so i will walk you through it one thing you can also do is go in and make sure you awaken characters so as you see right here i could go awaken my specter tenebria again which could help us a lot but we won't do it i just want to show you guys that this is clearable very very easily so <clears throat> there's the specter tenebria as you see i have plus 12 plus 12 if you want to upgrade this stuff to plus three plus six just to give it a little bit more survivability you won't be keeping this gear long term almost any of the gear you see right now except for the gear that is on your free spirit tier area you will not be keeping so raz still has no upgrades and destina if you would like you can go in and level them up with penguins it's good to save your three star penguins but if you do use them it's not a big deal because as an early game player you are going to be getting a ton of penguins uh, over the next week so <clears throat> we'll go in just do a little little upgrading like that and let's go see if we can beat the chapter now so just going to go straight there just again make sure you have completed everything up to this point and also if you haven't joined a guild uh, join the discord get in one of our guilds it will completely change your early game experience having a proper guild to be in and having a community to ask games or uh, questions about the game too so going into here it'll eventually load one day maybe okay there we go so here in this one you might want to try to look for someone who has a little bit stronger support it can either be just whatever higher level so this is a level 44 and the higher level obviously the more stats so we'll just go ahead and go in with this there's one thing you need to do when you get into this and it is to, um, you're going to want to manual the stage. This will be the first stage you manual throughout the entire game, basically. Everything else you should have just been able to do full auto, no problem. So now we have two orbs in the back. You need to kill the purple orb first. That orb is what heals. So if you don't kill these orbs early and try to just auto it, the orbs will keep healing the boss and you will end up failing. So that is what I mean by the first one is a little bit challenging. Or it's, it's like the first somewhat challenging floor, like, It'll take a couple turns to end up killing, but um, there is some RNG. So you see Wonders Potion Vial. We just cleanse our debuff immediately right there, which is huge. And then Raz, we can put up Defense Break. This will kill the one orb and then kill the second orb next so that you can actually land debuffs on the boss. So the second orb here, as you see, once you do this, you can start damaging Mercedes. Um, but you want to make sure that it cannot keep getting immunity because you want to be able to land Defense Break and Poisons on it. So... There is a little RNG. You may end up failing this occasionally uh, or once or twice. It's fine. You will end up beating it with this team. So right here, we're just going to S2 into this. We'll bring a dual attack with our Tyria. And then we'll go ahead and S1 this. It should just about kill it. We didn't crit, which is unlucky, but it's all good. So boss still has immunity, but right here, we kill the last orb. So from here, the boss will take a turn. And we still have a heal on our Destina. We have everything we need to just restabilize our team. So we'll just go ahead and do that now, just so we're max HP. And now we just whittle down the boss slowly. After this, I'm going to be showing you what to spend a couple currencies on. And then lastly, we're going to do the side story for Tamarin. And I will show you guys summoning on that. So after that, the first episode is done. I'll make a checklist of all the things you should have done at the end. So you can watch that and make sure you're uh, to the spot that you're supposed to be. But other than that, that is the first day of Epic 7. So our first part of Epic 7. If this takes you three days to complete, no problem. Don't worry about it at all. It's completely normal. Everyone plays at different paces. So we're getting a little bit unlucky right here in terms of our like DPS getting debuffed. So we may end up failing it, but the more souls you build up, one thing is I always suggest using Arky on your team. Having Arky on your team is going to give you a ton of extra uh, damage, and it is the lowest cost souls that you can use. So soul burning your character is usually pretty good, but Arky does a percentage base of damage based off how much HP the boss has. So... <clears throat> We are going, and each skill gives a different amount of souls. So as you see, this one gives, I believe, two or three souls. So usually your skill threes give you more souls. So as you start having to manual stages, you will learn very quickly what the best soul use is. So right here, we're saving our souls and we're going to end up uh, using our Arky just so you guys can see the guaranteed damage that it does. So right here, since Destina has no skills, a lot of the time it's best to save your Arky for like your Soul Weaver's turn to get some extra damage out. Now we'll S2, and that should bring our damage dealer, and let's see if we kill it. We did. Okay, so it's that easy. You saw my Raz and um, Destina have plus zero gear on, but that is going to be the first boss of the game. Very quick and simple. I'm going to skip through all these scenes real quick, and then I'm going to show you what to spend this currency on. So as we get to this point, we are going to, I think there's going to be like 10 things we got to skip through. It's normal. Um, we unlocked Unrecorded History in Episode 2. These are going to be the next things we're going to be working on. Uh, so that'll be the start of next guide, but I won't cover it in this. We've already, this video is probably already over an hour at this point because we covered, we basically from last guide, we stretched day one and day two into each other. So now once you get to this point, you just go back to adventure and you are going to be claiming 
your um it'll give you a little story but we're going to be skipping or you can watch that if you want obviously i've seen it a hundred million times but we're going to be going ahead and skipping the tutorial we're going to claim all of this one thing also to make sure that you're doing is going through and claiming all of the chapter rewards so this is one important currency in the game it's gold transmit stones this is your way of trying to get these super strong rare characters in the game so if you get here you click back and you see anything with the red dots on it go make sure you claim those and make sure uh, that every single one of these bars is fully filled up this is going to give you a bunch of extra bookmarks for when we do go summon for tamarin if we don't get tamarin it's fine we're not going to spend sky stones on her we're going to keep farming her banner will be up for seven days from when you open it but she is going to be huge you will be switching out your destiny for tamarin and yes i suggest you get tamarin no matter what if you already have her you can skip this and not do any summons on anything i would wait I wouldn't for force another story summon for a little bit. Wait until there's a character you need. So now that we did that, this is how you spend your gold transmit stones. You will click summon and then uh, it will, you'll see them up here. You'll click on the thing or just go to the shop and go to transmit stone. It's the same here. And then we will always be buying galaxy bookmarks. As a new player, getting any Moonlight 5 character on your account will completely change the like trajectory or like your ability of your account. They're, a lot of them are just unbelievably strong. There are some good non-Moonlight 5 characters, but the Moonlight 5 characters just know these are focused for PvP. Some of them can work in PvE, but majority of them, their use case is PvP. So once you get it, you just go ahead and summon. If it sparks, you get ML4, or if it doesn't, you most likely got an ML3. If it doesn't spark, it does have a chance to change right here and spark, but ours did not, so we got an ML3 star. Some ML3 stars are okay. I'm going to be making a tier list video for new players as to what characters are good for you early game. Now, next up, the Mystic Summon. Mystic Summon is a way to guarantee characters. This banner rotates every three weeks for new characters. It technically rotates every week and puts a new RGB character in the game. So next week you see it's Mui, and then we have Ludwig next week, but it's every three weeks. Every three weeks we'll get a rerun of old characters. So as you see right here, um, you can pick between four different characters. Always make sure it's worth summoning on the characters before you just start ripping summons. These are super, super important, and it takes 200 to pity. So 200 summons, this is, it costs like $700 if you want to spend to guarantee a character. So it's very expensive. So it's very advised to use these as smartly as you can. So anytime you're curious on the character, if the character on banner is good or not, or which one of the ones you should go for, just again, the Discord's going to be the best thing. You can scroll through YouTube videos and hope to find it. If you see streamers live, you can ask them. But right now, of all these characters, I don't really recommend any of them. We already have Spectre Tibria. If you want to summon on Spectre Tibria, if you're starting today, you can. Strays, I don't really recommend going for. He's used for a bunch of one-shot PvE stuff, but there are a bunch of one-shots without him. So if you get him, the thing is you're not going to be able to one-shot things in this game for a while except for Banshee. So trying to get him and force a one-shot as a player who's been playing for less than six months, I've had it happen, and a bunch of people just waste all the resources still aren't able to one shot and now they can't progress in anything because they tried super hard to make this work because they see that the, all the end game players doing it so be very careful when playing the game to not try to do things outside of your reach there be certain characters you shouldn't build right away there trust me the game's a marathon you will get there but don't try to force things you are not quite ready for or you will you will not see the results that you see other people getting so if you uh want I, that, these two i would not suggest getting for new players Spectre Seabeard, there's the option. You can do some summons if you get her. You can go change your Moonlight Blessing to Moonlight Ken. That would be a really good start for an account. And the thing is, your Mystic Pity stays. So as the banner changes and goes to new characters, it stays at whatever number you were at. So if we did 100 summons, we would be 100 to Pity until the new character comes. So we could just go ahead and rip a summon. I'm going to just for fun. And if we get Stenny, then we would switch out. So let's go ahead and do it. And no luck. So... And that is all it is. If it sparks, it's cool. If it doesn't, oh well. So the rates on this are way higher than getting Moonlights from pretty much anything else uh, overall. But it's still, the summoning this game is rough. But you will get the characters over time. Trust me, you play for a year, the amount of free characters you get is huge. So now that we have gone over the, that's where you spend your gold transmit stones. And then we are going, I don't summon on any of these banners. What our next play is going to be is we're going to go out of here and then we're going to go to side story. So the first thing we'll do is clear this Dear Mentor side story. Once you clear it, you can buy the items within it. It's it's okay to. But if you don't buy them, it's not a big deal. I would if you're going to try to get through this part fast, then you I would buy the Mulligore and the bookmark. If you buy those two things, it is all good. And then we will click start a different side story. 
And once we start a different side story, we will end up starting Tamarins. So let me skip through this. So Tamarin is this character right here, the Shining Star side story. Once you start her side story and clear to the end of her chapter, we will be going in and summoning on her. So for right here, I'm just gonna pause the video. I'll come back whenever we have finished Tamarin's side story. A couple last things, and then the video will be wrapped up. All right, so once you have finished Tamarin and the Alexa side story, and got to stage 10 of the Tamarin one, you will come into here to story summon. So go, come into summon, sorry, I will show the full thing. Come into summon at the bottom, and then you will scroll down and go to story summon. Now you will go to the character and select Tamarin. Once you select Tamarin, you will see how banners work. 120 summons is what it takes to pity a character, which is 605 bookmarks. Our plan for this guide and what we always do is we summon on Tamarin, but we don't use any sky stones. You get enough bookmarks if you play for seven days to pity her. So if we don't get her, don't spam your sky stones, it's fine. You just keep playing, keep doing challenges, keep earning bookmarks, it's fine, you will get there. So with Tamarin, we can just do whatever summon. The summons do not matter, five or 10. There's no extra bonus rates for 10 summons. So we will just summon on her. If we get her, we will trade her out for Destina. If we don't get her, we will not trade her out for Destina. So let's go ahead. Last time I did have to pity her. And let's see if we get her this time. So, so far we did, we got a bloody rose. We did get a five star artifact, but it's not her artifact. Her artifact's okay. But one thing with this is once you get one Tamarin, stop summoning. You wanna be as efficient with your uh, summons as you can be. So if you get one, you just stop right there. So we did not get her there and we'll do one more 10 summon. And we got a spark and we did not get her, but we got our artifact. So um, this kind of lucky, kind of unlucky. If you get up to six transmit stones, you can buy another galaxy bookmark and summon there. But uh, we'll do two more summons and we'll just slowly keep progressing and trying to get her over time. So if you don't get her right now, it's fine. Just keep using your. All right. So we did not get her. So that is normal. Last guide, I pitied her. Um, I had to do the full summons. It took me like six days. So one thing is the banner is only up for seven days from the minute you start it. So at the seventh day, if you didn't play enough and her banner's about to go away, then you can use Sky Stones to finish her. That's the only time I'd recommend using Sky Stones on her. Otherwise, if you play a reasonable amount each day, you should be getting enough Covenant bookmarks to pull her without any problem. So I could get some more summons and show them here, but we'll do that on another video so I could claim all this stuff. Make sure you claim all your stuff throughout this. As you see, I didn't claim anything going through. It would have been a ton more resources. So there's going to be a bunch of stuff in there I can grab, but we'll grab it in another time, or I'll grab it right after I'm done recording. So now, end checklist. What you should be working on next, we'll be going into a new, um, the episode two of the guide. If you have any of these, make sure you spend them before the end of the day. You should be at zero. And then just keep completing this, and then we'll get to the part where we're promoting a five star to six star. We'll be doing that tomorrow. Next up, uh, in terms of your sanctuary my sanctuary is 313 111 bottom right the middle i didn't put any in the steel workshop should be the next two three alchemist steeple 033 and then heart of orbis will be end up being like 231 or something like that at the end so uh, i have a guide on that i'll be putting that after day two in the stream or in the um playlist so again i do live stream these completely so the live stream accounts a different account but it's the exact same thing so if you want to play alongside me for day one day two or if you're watching this and day two is not up it you can go watch the live stream of day two and see what all i do there and i have up to day five or four on there i'm starting day five so another thing is if you go down to the bottom left hand corner of your screen and click shop then you can go in and there will be a pack again this will be a free to play this will be completely free to play so this has some extra a bunch of items in here. You can click it and claim them all. If you buy the pack, you get some extra sky stones. This is actually decent value if you want to get it. Newbie packs good value. Um, every there's any of the cheap packs are pretty good value, but the these packs all especially. But as the packs get more expensive, they start not being the greatest of value. But go ahead and grab that now. Make sure you're in a guild, and then uh, next up we have cleared 1010. Our hunts and stuff is just as far as you can get in it. And these are what our characters look like. So we have, these are the gear sets for them. We have Free Spirit Tyria, Spectre Nibir, Destina, Raz. So now we are going to go in and look at last thing. So that's like a checklist of where you should be. Now the last thing is um, we want to, I want to show you what to do with your heroes. So after you do all your summons, you're going to have a big stockpile of heroes. So you can just transmit your two stars. And then from here, you're going to sort by name and you're going to lock one copy of each character. Anytime you get a new character, make sure you have at least one copy of them locked. You do not want to be transmitting your characters 
And then, and then once we find a character we have a dupe of, we lock them, and then we're going to memory imprint them. Once you memory imprint them, you will be getting spirit blooms. So you can use that to six star, five star, promote characters. And you, um, this way you have each different character, at least one copy, because you never know when you're going to need it. Characters get buffed all the time, so a bad character could end up being good. But if you see you feed a four star into a four star, you actually get four uh, gold spirit blooms. And if you feed a five star into a five star, you get purple spirit blooms. And this unlocks the memory imprint for them, which can give them extra bonus stats for either your team, or you can use an item like we did on Tyria, and it will give a self imprint. So just go through and do this for all your characters. Make sure one copy of each thing's locked and then you're good to go. So there are certain times five stars, you can feed five star characters, so you can feed any character into the Moonlight version of their character. So if you pull a Moonlight three star, of a, uh, there are no dupes for that. But a Moonlight four star, a four star example would be um, Dominial. There are uh, two different Moonlight Dominials. You could feed a duplicate copy of a blue Dominial into one of the Moonlight versions that are either uh, gonna be dark or light. So. On your four star and five star characters, you might want to save them at first in case you want to wait and put them into one of those. But at the beginning, if you just feed, um, it's it's not bad to just go ahead and clean up your inventory because you only have so much space. So might as well get it as cleaned up as you can. So other than that, that's all I have for this video. One thing I'm going to be doing different from the guide series is I'm going to be going through and showing the end step process. So if you skip to any video, you'll see all the things you want to have done before you get to the next episode so as you saw right there we claimed 10 of these so we can go in and do 10 floors so as we get to day two we should be around floor 22 21 so go ahead and do these just use the same team and then if you want to keep farming what we're going to be doing is going into unrecorded history and we're going to be going into the next uh, stage of adventure so go ahead and work on that if you'd like our goal is to get to account rank 25 we unlock pets which allow us to repeat battling so that will be what we're trying to push for at the beginning of day two so Thank you guys again for watching. My name, um, it's been Mitch or Deity. Um, this guide series I'm gonna make quite a bit cleaner than last one, less wasted time and space on everything. I know the videos are gonna be long, but they're in parts. You can watch the video, do so much per day, come back to that same video on the next day. If you don't finish everything, it's fine. Again, play at your own pace. And again, this guide is going to be still be PVP focused, but we're gonna clear all PVE early game and get your account set up. So there will be some changes from last guide. But those changes are to try to kind of reflect the old general advice. So I stopped getting as much pushback from like five people in the official Epic 7 Discord. Like there are every day I get 500 positive comments that my guide series helped them. But then the one negative comment for one of them, I'll see it. And I'm like, oh, it, it, that one negative comment has the same value. But the thing is, all the stuff you do early game, as long as you're on somewhat of a right path, your account's going to be fine. Like a lot of them are saying if you pick a Saria over Destina, you're breaking your account. But the thing is, you can just summon a Syria later, and if you can't figure out how to beat the content, the PV content without a Syria, that is a problem. Like, there are plenty of ways to beat everything. So do not feel like you need a Syria. If you took Destiny and you're like, well, I'm not gonna use her now, you're going to use her once you get to PVP. So she will help you tremendously for getting your account even more stabilized. You just won't have the cheat code character for some of like Abyss Force and things, but there are plenty of super easy ways to beat those. So that's all I got. If you're new to the channel, if you're willing to subscribe, it would help me a lot. But it's been Mr. Didi, and I'll see you in episode two. All right, one last quick thing that I forgot to go over. If you missed this in the guide, I'll go over it at the beginning of day two. But you want to make sure that you claim all of your event rewards, obviously. Most of you probably already did it, but in the seven-day check-in guide and then also in the... Uh, so make sure you do all this for day one. And then you're also going to want to go into the adventure, or adventure for New Heirs and Call to Adventure, claim all of this stuff. But the biggest thing you need to make sure you get is going to be this right here. So you want to claim these two last things and you want to get this as nine free covenant summons every day for seven days. So this is going to give you a lot of your early game characters that you may end up using uh, for like Wyvern. So we're aiming for a three star called Mui. So once you claim it, it'll take you back to the lobby and then you'll just summon your nine every single day. So just a way that all players do get a little bit of free summons. So we'll go ahead and rip them just see if we get anything good. And then this will be the end of the video. But I hope the first video you guys saw how in-depth this is going to be i'm going to be covering everything you could possibly think of pretty much so do not worry if if there's sh if there's ever a spot you get stuck we have the discord to get you unstuck but with between me live streaming it and showcasing all the different things 
you should have a very smooth transition of getting into this game. So, I, like I said many times, this game is amazing. I've been playing it for five years. It continues to feel fresh. Obviously, there are certain points with the like meta of PvP that get a little frustrating, but it always is, balances out over time. So, I, it's why I'm still playing this game. There are plenty of other games I could be playing, but this is... I'm very confident. Even, oh, Tiger Hills, that's really good. Very confident that if you guys start the game right now, you will be pretty happy with it. So there are my summons. Just make sure you claim that so you can start aiming for some of the three-star stuff. I will go over what artifacts to keep tomorrow and things like that. But for right now, that will be it for this video. I will see you all in part two. Peace out.